Former President Donald Trump and his legal team are now officially filing an appeal against his half a billion dollar New York civil fraud judgment. So Trump's lawyers recently filed notices to appeal that are asking the state's mid-level appeals court to overturn Judge Ergonon's verdict in the lawsuit brought against the former president by Letitia James, the New York attorney general. So the fine placed on Donald Trump was set at $454 million, and it's currently set to deplete him of his entire cash reserves. Last year, he testified openly about his finances and admitted to having around $400 million in cash reserves. Each day that goes by, this fine continues to go up due to the interest placed by James. And hey guys, before we go any further into this, all I ask is that you guys take one second, drop a quick like for the video. I totally appreciate that. And I just want to thank you guys so much for always liking and sharing my videos. I just, I can't thank you guys enough. Now, initially Trump was told that he would be paying $87,502 in post judgment interest every day until he pays the entire fine. Now, I'm not sure what changed their minds, but somehow this number has now ballooned to $112,000 per day. Now, many analysts say that this money wouldn't probably help the state of New York other than the illegal immigrants that continue to be let in and paid for. So basically, they want Trump's money so they can pay for the illegal immigrants that are coming in. So James has also repeatedly said that this isn't personal for her. There is no personal vendetta against the former president. Y'all can go ahead and believe that if you want. However, she also showed a lot of enthusiasm at the idea that she would be able to take businesses and real estate away from Trump. But yet there's no personal vendetta against Trump from James, right? Now, there are some that feel as if this is a bit cruel given that thousands of people would probably lose their jobs once she takes these assets. I mean, think about it. New York's attorney general says she is ready to seize former President Trump's assets if he is unable to cover that $355 million judgment against him. Tish James says she wouldn't hesitate to seize one of his buildings, like 40 Wall Street, if necessary. She spoke with ABC's Aaron Katursky and says she is confident in the strength of the case, which the Trump team has vowed to appeal. If he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek, uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court. And so at the end of the day, how he pays for the judgment is really not my business. Awaiting to pay the judgment could be costly. He will owe an additional $87,502 per day in interest every day until he pays off the verdict. Trump's assets are literally the jobs of people who work for Trump. Now, Trump on his end has called this a political witch hunt, alleging that they're doing all of this to try and stop him from running for president. So this witch hunt has led his legal team to contact the state's mid-level courts and have them decide if Judge Arthur Engernon committed errors of law and or fact and whether he abused his discretion or acted in excess of his jurisdiction. Now, as far as we know, Trump wasn't required to pay his penalty or post a bond in order to appeal. However, appealing won't automatically stop the enforcement of Engranon's judgment. Trump and his team have until the end of March to secure a stay. Now, if you're able to do that, then the collection of the fine will be paused while they're making their appeal. There is one way for Trump to get an automatic stay, and that is if he puts up the money, assets, or an appeal bond covering what he owes. His team can also go a different route and ask the appeals court directly to grant a stay without obtaining a bond or a bond with a lower amount. To date, we're not really sure if his team has posted an appeal bond or if they're securing one yet. Many experts believe that they're probably in the process of securing one right now, but will probably wait until later to divulge it to the press. They did, however, say that they're putting their trust in the appellate division regarding this matter and they hope to overturn this fine. I feel like they're all a part of the same team here, so I don't even know if that, I don't know if Trump's gonna get a fair shake. But this case actually has a lot hanging in the balance for New York, as well as there's the possibility that they lose businesses because of this action. This is much bigger than Donald Trump. So here's something that we really need to realize here. So the appeal of Trump's team is making sure of one very important detail. They want this to run as long as possible. Why? because they wanted to run right through November and right through the 2024 presidential elections. Trump is the forerunner for the Republican primary at the moment, 
And having him win would probably change a lot of things when it comes to this issue. The former president has also pushed back multiple times against Engranon and his decisions and say that this is clearly election interference. Now, I said that this case may bring businesses out of New York. This is a statement that's echoed by Christopher Keese, one of Trump's lawyers. Now, while he hopes that the appeals court ultimately corrects what he calls the innumerable and catastrophic errors made by a trial court untethered to the law or even reality. He also admitted that if the decision does stand, then this would send a signal to the rest of America that New York is no longer open for business. In Kevin O'Leary's words, it becomes a flyover state. Many business owners were actually surprised at what happened with some of them wondering if the same would be done to them. Because again, this is a former president of the United States and they're charging him with half a billion dollars in fines. If they're willing to do this to Donald Trump, who knows what they would do to the average Joe. Now, of course, Trump can go ahead and sell some of his properties to pay the penalty at this stage. He argues that he's still worth billions of dollars, so it might not be that big of an issue for him to come up with this number, but still, I don't really care who you are. Half a billion dollars, even if you're a billionaire, it's a lot of freaking money. Now, if he does so and he obtains a stay, that money would be held in a court escrow account. If the court overturns the verdict and favors Trump, then he gets all his money back. Many analysts argue that there is a clear bias within the judgment for Trump. His legal team even accused Judge Engranon of showing his overwhelming bias by not giving the former president a fair trial. And if you look at the pictures of Judge Ergonon, why does he look so sinister and weird and, and kind of like borderline happy at delivering this awful news of half a billion dollars in fines to Trump? He reminds me of one of those people I saw from uh, Jay Epstein's island. Anyway, it's also been found out that he expanded the authority of an independent monitor to oversee the Trump organization's finances. So this monitor would also be able to impose fines against his sons and top company executives as they see fit. So basically all lines were blurred. We're coming after everyone. Some say that this is merely a way to politically tarnish Trump's reputation as a businessman, one of the many things that made him famous. Basically, they're trying to destroy the man's legacy. What better way to knock out the Republican primary competitor in the 2024 presidential election? Now, there's a couple of ways that this could ultimately play out, guys. Reduce or modify the penalty or even overturn the decision entirely. And Engranon on his end, he says that the former president is trying his best to dismiss the truth and the facts. He further added that the numbers and evidence don't lie. But many argue that the judge saw Trump as guilty before the case even started. Trump's lawyers also said that Allison Greenfield, Engranon's chief law clerk, violated court rules by donating to Democratic causes. Trump and his lawyers were fined thousands of dollars for knowing this fact. Really? Yep. Judge Engranon even argued that he had every right to listen to Greenfield's advice regarding this case. The expectation for this case is that we'll probably see it extend beyond November of this year. Trump isn't sure of winning the presidency, although it would probably help him protect himself from charges if he ever gets into the White House again. Now, there's also the possibility that this specific case can be taken to a higher court as it's only at the mid levels as of now. Now there's also the matter of what happens to New York after everything's said and done. What about the businesses? What about the truckers? Would we see an exodus of businesses in New York state? Mix that in with the possibility of truckers boycotting them and you just mix that in with the possibility of truckers boycotting them and you'd see just how bad this can get for the people of New York. Now, as far as I'm concerned, guys, I'm gonna do my best to keep you guys informed and we're gonna monitor how things are progressing. I'm gonna keep you guys posted. Now, before I go, I just wanna thank you guys for hitting the like button. Thanks for subscribing to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one.